In this video, we will focus on how you can use ID BIMLINK to review and manage workset assignments for Revit model elements. One of the challenges with Revit is the ability to identify model-based elements that have been placed on the incorrect workset. While Revit does allow us to create 2D and 3D views that isolate elements by their workset, trying to review and make workset changes to elements is error-prone and time-consuming. It may be also near impossible to see the smaller elements, as they tend to get buried within larger elements. In addition to the difficulties of viewing elements that have been isolated by worksets, Revit will not report on workset assignments for elements within schedules, which makes it nearly impossible to review element worksets from a data perspective. This task would have to be done manually by selecting on each element to review the assigned workset from the Properties palette. Thankfully, we have ID BIMLINK to assist us with this challenge. ID BIMLINK reports both editable and non-editable workset assignments for elements so that users can perform QA, QC tasks of workset assignments using Excel. When necessary and applicable, the workset assignments for model elements can be changed in Excel and then pushed back into the Revit model so that the workset assignments can be updated. Let's have a look at this process. I'm going to select a 3D view. And in this 3D view, I can see many model elements. If I click on the work sharing display options and I select work sets, you can see that the model is now colored by their work set assignment. If I select the work sharing display settings again and come up over here, we can see the color assignment for each work set. While this key is helpful to help me understand what the work set assignments are for each one of these elements, it's not a bogus dialog box, meaning I cannot keep this up while working in the model. I may have to take a screenshot or write down the color assignments for each one of these work sets. This may not be too helpful. I'll hit cancel here. I'm going to come to a view here. This one is called QAQC work set move items. And if I select visibility graphics and click on work sets, you can see that I've isolated the entire view by work set one move items. All the other work set assignments are turned off. I could certainly come in over here and I can color this by work set once again, and I can start auditing the work set assignments for these elements visually. I can come over here and see that I have some furniture on work set one, and by selecting each one of these elements, I can now move them over to the proper work set. You can see they disappear because they are no longer on work set one, and again, this view is isolated to only show elements that are on the work set one assignment. Now, while this may be helpful for larger elements, how do we deal with smaller elements such as electrical fixtures or any other small item for that matter? Trying to view these items by work set is laborious and it's very error prone. A lot of these elements can be buried within smaller elements and really difficult to see. I may have to come in here and start doing section boxes or hiding other elements just to get inside the model. Or I may have to make many other views in order to audit this. Instead of doing this process, we're going to use ID software to help us out and the task today at hand will be using BIMLINK. I'll go ahead and select the ID8 software tab, and then I'll select on BIMLINK. Once selected, I'm gonna click on New. I'm gonna scroll down the list here to find the Quality Control subfolder. This is where we placed all of the Quality Control based links. As you can see, there are many of them here. I'm gonna look for the work set one. This happens to be a multi-category link. I'm gonna select Next. Once complete, we'll take you to the Categories tab. If I scroll up and down the list to have a look at the categories, you can see that by default we've selected all of them. When I go to the Filters tab, we are only filtering based on where the work set is editable. That means any sort of categories of elements that have non-editable work sets, those will be filtered out. Such examples are views or system panels, lines, and so forth. That'll take a long list of elements and edit them down just to the essentials. As you see here in the work set column, these are all in white, which means they are editable. If I click on the properties tab, you could see the listing of parameters that we've mapped. You could certainly add or remove parameters as you see fit. For example, perhaps I wanna grab the level name and add that. I'll select level name and add that here. Perhaps I wanna grab the room name. This gives me some additional auditing capabilities. Perhaps I want to know what level and room some of these elements belong to. And in some cases, you may get no information, and that's okay. 
that's because there may not be any sort of level assignment or room assignment for some of these elements. Finally, under the link tab, we have this export with dropdown values. And that's very beneficial to us. The reason being is when we export this out to Excel, we're going to get a list of all the work sets that exist in this project. When I want to reassign some of the work sets for these elements, I can pick from a drop down list rather than manually type them in. If I had to manually type them in, there's a good chance that I can make a mistake with my typing and essentially try to assign some of these elements work sets that don't exist. Finlink will give us a error upon import and will not allow us to change it to a work set that doesn't exist. We have great error reporting within Binlink and we'll tell you the reason why. But with the drop-down list, we don't have to worry because everything will be spelled correctly. I'll hit done and I'm going to export and I'll save it to this folder. Once complete, I'm going to open the file. You can now see the data from the model. Columns A through G represent the parameters that I've exported out. And then column H is a little bit of a buffer between the dropdown list and the Revit model data. And column I represents the dropdown list of the work sets that are part of this model. When I click here in G2, you can see that I have a dropdown list. This allows me to pick the exact work set name. As I mentioned earlier, if I had to manually type in the work set, I could potentially make a mistake. I'll go ahead and assign this the correct work set, which happens to be areas, and then I'll fill this down. When I import this Excel file, all these areas will be moved to the correct work set. Let's look at ceilings. I'm going to go ahead and assign it to the interiors work set, and same thing, I'll just fill this down. I'm going to scroll down and look for furniture and furniture systems. You can see that these are all part of the work set one. I need to move that to the FF and E. And just like before, I'll fill down. And you can see there's a lot of furniture here and furniture systems. So just like that, all of these elements that I just changed will be reassigned to the new work set. I'll go ahead and stop there and hit save. I'll close this out. And then I'm going to import that Excel file. I'll hit open. Once complete, I'll review any of the changes and if there are any errors and warnings. And you can see here in yellow, this represents a change. As I scroll down the list, we can see all the interiors F, F, and E. If I scroll back up, we can see all the areas. And down here, no errors and warnings. I will hit the import button. And just like that, those elements that I just changed have now been assigned to their new work sets. Let's go ahead and have a look over here at the model. You may recall that we had a lot of furniture showing up in this particular view. They're now gone. And the reason why is those elements are now part of the FF and E work set. And in this particular view, if I go back to visibility graphics and click on the work sets tab, we are only showing elements that are still part of work set one. The goal of this particular project is to have no items showing as part of work set one, as indicated here with the move items. As you were able to see, it's easy to use our quality control multi-category work set link to export your information out to Excel, where you can audit the work set assignment and change the work sets if necessary. And then upon import, those Revit elements will be reassigned to their new work sets. We hope you found this information helpful and beneficial to your workflows. Be sure to visit our website at id8software.com to learn more about our products, workflows, help, and upcoming classes. Be sure to also follow us on social media for the latest information and news from ID8 Software. Thank you.